Hello, my name is Stuart Hamblin and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today's Feldenkrais lesson follows on from the amphibian lesson and is the next lesson in the intermediate happy hips, happy knees and happy feet series that I'm currently teaching. If you have seen or done the amphibian lesson, you'll know that it involved a lot of sliding of the limbs and today's lesson picks up on that theme very much and you'll um, uh, see that I've learnt from my previous experience in that I've an added an extra mat to my other mat in order to help me slide limbs with the minimum of friction. So if you, um, you might want to put a blanket or a um, some kind of covering on your on your mat just to make sure it's as smooth to slide legs and arms as possible. So today's lesson is a great one for the hips and the knees but it does involve some more challenging positions or positions that my students here in Rutland found more challenging. So I just begin really with the usual caution to take things very very easy. Nothing is obligatory um, don't force anything and always listen to how you're feeling as you're doing the lesson. Um, please begin though by coming to lie down on your mat and just take a moment once you've settled into the mat to notice how you're lying. Um, one thing to pay attention to is where are the toes pointing are they out to the, pointing out to the side or maybe they're pointing up towards the ceiling? Maybe there's a difference between the way one leg is organised compared to the other. And then scan the contact of the back into the floor and just see if you can guess or guesstimate how much of your back is down. Is it about 80% of the back you feel is resting? Or are you perhaps more lifted away from the floor with the ribs pushing up towards the ceiling? So again, just notice the contact of the back. Maybe you'll feel that one side of the back is, is more weighted into the floor compared to the other. And then check how your shoulders are resting into the floor, how you've placed the arms. And then bring your attention to the point of contact on the back of the head. Where are you making contact? And then please just roll the head and eyes a little bit from one side to the other, just to see if you can detect a difference between the way the head is rolling to the right, maybe compared to the left. And that, that often is, there often is, um, as we begin the lesson. And then once you've done that, please bring your attention to your right foot and just as the leg is lying, begin to point and flex the foot. So as you point the foot, you send the toes away from you. As you flex the foot, you send the heel away from you. And then once you've just done a few of those movements, then just alter the, the angle of the leg so you can turn the foot and knee in, do a few movements there um, and then change position after one or two movements in, at each angle just to help prepare the feet and the legs for some of the work to come. And then please do the same with the left leg and the left foot. So just gently pointing and flexing and after about one or two movements just change the angle of the point of the toes, so you're just exploring a number of possibilities for the foot, the hip uh, and the leg. Good. And then please pause, come to centre, bring both your legs to standing and again just by way of a little warm-up that I like to teach my students or um, to use to begin the lesson is this idea that you're lying on a clock your pelvis is lying on a clock, 12 o'clock is towards the head, 6 o'clock is towards the feet. Could you begin to roll your pelvis a little bit to 12 o'clock towards the head 
and then towards six o'clock towards the feet. So you're rolling the pelvis to 12 o'clock towards the head and then towards six o'clock towards the feet. And in rolling the pelvis, see if you can include the idea that the chest is involved. So that when I roll the pelvis to 12 o'clock, for example, and feel my lower back is down towards the floor, I think of softening, pulling in and down my ribs as though they're going to meet the pelvis. And then when I think of going to six o'clock, the distance between the pubic bone and the breastbone lengthens. So just including the thought, the idea that the chest is part of the movement of 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock and by doing that you'll perhaps feel much more involvement of your spine in the movement. Now pause, leave that alone carefully roll to one side and um, come up to all fours. So many of my students find this position on all fours a challenge. Um, it might be because of the wrists, it might be for other issues. So only spend as much time here as you can comfortably bear if you are experiencing wrist problems, then one solution might be to do this part of the lesson. As I say, we're not going to be here very long on your, on your fists. Um, or you just have the option of leaving it out. Nothing, nothing, as I've said, is obligatory. And then once you have come on to all fours on your hands and knees, just see, can you cross the right knee over the left and then bring it back. So um, you're just seeing, can you bring the knee, the right knee forward and cross it over the left and then come back. So again, just pause, pause for a moment so that you can see the screen. So I'm obviously showing the movement after having done the lesson a number of times myself. So um, I've benefited from doing the lesson many times. But um, when, in my class, when I taught this to my students, many of the, them found it very difficult. You know, they were struggling to get the knee forward, trying very hard to cross it over. Um, and just getting blocked, blocked. So don't be surprised if that's the case for you at the, at the beginning of the lesson. That's partly why we're doing the lesson, is to improve this ability. And many, much of the difficulty often lies in the back and the spine and the, and the chest. If they're very held, they block the, the movement. So again, to reiterate, Please don't try too hard, don't try and force anything. Um, just have one or two goes um, to see. But I'll just show you again. You can see actually that to slide my knee forward, my weight is having to shift forward, my head is coming forward, my pelvis is coming forward, and then to cross the right knee over the left, my pelvis is having to shift in space, in space, um, to um, enable that knee to slide easily in front of the left. Once you've explored a few movements, just trying to cross the right knee over the left, then try the other cross, the left knee in front of the, the right. So we're just bringing the left knee forward and see, can you cross it over, over the right? Trying not to lift the leg too much. So you're just seeing, can you bring the left knee forward and cross it over the right a number of times, just to see how that is. And you can see that for me, it, it involves, 
I'm not just thinking of the knee. I'm allowing my weight, my head to shift forward, my pelvis travels forward, and then my pelvis travels back and over to the right to facilitate that cross of the of the knee. So just one or two more, one or two more times, just seeing how easily can you do it. Um, and if you can't do it easily, that's absolutely fine. That's what we're trying to work on um, today. It involves a lot of flexibility in the hips and in the spine. Please come and take a rest on the back. As I said, many of my students find that all fours position a bit of a shock, but I can promise you, or tell you, confirm that after the lesson, there was a lot of improvement in that ability to cross the knees. So just come on to the back, take a moment to rest, and then check into the breath so you're not holding the breath or clenching the jaw. And then just roll the head again a little bit from one side to the other to see how that comes. And then pause and then please come to lie on your front. So those who did the amphibian lesson or have done the amphibian lesson, um, they'll find it um, really helped for this part of the lesson. And just by way of a review, um, please have your left cheek on the mat, your left arm down by your side, and your right hand somewhere near the head. And then bring your attention to the pelvis, and could you begin to roll the pelvis to the left, and then back again a few times. And your Remember, recall from the amphibian lesson that we're not just rolling the pelvis, you're allowing your weight to shift to the left hand side of the chest. And when you do that, almost magically, the legs begin to organise. Something happens to the legs. The inside of the right knee begins to present to the floor the inside of the foot so that if you were to roll the pelvis enough, you could begin to slide that right leg up alongside you and away. <clears throat> so you roll the pelvis and slide, so we're not lifting the right leg, just sliding it up alongside you and then away. Just a few times, just to remind ourselves of this movement and away. And then you'll perhaps also recall from the amphibian lesson, we did another variation, which was to roll the pelvis. So I'm still looking to my right, the left cheek is still on the floor, rolling the pelvis to the left, so as to be able to slide the left knee up alongside, and then away. So rolling the pelvis to the left, Sorry, to the right to be able to slide the left leg up along the side and away. So, and you'll remember it, to be able to do this, it's a double tw twist in the spine because of the position of the head. And it's really allowing the pelvis to move over enough to create the space to bring the left leg up alongside you and then away. So... Just a quick review, really, of what we looked at um, in the previous lesson. So let's just change everything around to even ourselves up so that your uh, right cheek will be on the floor, the left right arm down by your side, and your left hand will be just somewhere near the head. And then see if you can roll your pelvis to the right and then back a few times. Remember, it's not just the pelvis. I'm allowing my weight to come into the right-hand side of the chest to, to allow that twist to travel through the spine. 
And then when you feel ready, you could begin to slide your left leg up alongside you and away a few times. So towards you and away. And then once you've explored that movement, then think of rolling the pelvis to the left and back again a few times to the left. And when you feel the organisation of the legs happening, then you can begin to slide your right leg up alongside you and away. Left leg up along, uh, sorry, right leg up alongside you and then away. Good. And then pause. Just rest the head on the backs of the hands and then just roll your pelvis a little bit from side to side. Of course, it, again, it's not just the pelvis. I'm rolling weight to one side of the breastbone and then the other. You see, if I didn't allow the weight to shift in my chest, if I held it very stiff and just wiggled the tailbone, you can perhaps see there's movement only in the lower part of the spine. Whereas if I allow my chest to become involved, that movement travels much more freely up the spine. So pause, and then please just have a rest on the back for a moment. I think I mentioned last week, I love all of these lessons that involve these amphibian type movements. Um, I find them so effective for bringing about change in the back and the spine, softening my students' spines, making them much more available for movement. So see how you feel when you come to lie on the back. And already I can feel some of my ribs on the right hand side which have a tendency to stick out. I'm right handed, and they've softened a little bit. And then just roll the head a little bit side to side, see how that is. Good. And then please come to lie on your front again. So the previous variation was just to remind us of what we did in the amphibian lesson. And we're going to use those movements um, in today's lesson. Begin once you're on the front, this time, of having both your arms in a press-up type position. So, a press-up type position, and, um, and maybe just turn your fingers a little bit out to the side, the hands a little bit out to the side. Have your left cheek on the, on the mat, and then begin to roll your pelvis to the left as we did before to begin to slide your right leg up alongside you and then away. So I roll the pelvis and chest to the left to be able to slide the right knee, the right leg up alongside me and away a few times. So just getting used to that movement sliding the leg up and then away. And then once you've become comfortable with that, see if you can begin to slide the head as if it's going to meet the knee and then away. So sliding the head towards the knee and then away. And again, it's not just the head, is it? It's the whole of the spine and the chest that are involved. So as I, if I want to bring my head towards the knee without strain, I have to be able to soften those ribs and the chest. So it's the whole of my spine that's curving to help bring the knee and the head together. And then just try... To, um, as you're bringing the head towards the knee, think it's your chin that's coming to the knee and then away. So it's your chin that's coming to the knee and away. 
and then try a few movements of your tip of your nose coming to the knee and away. So the tip of the nose. And then try a few movements thinking it's the forehead coming to the knee and away. The forehead towards the knee and away. And then just pause and rest. So perhaps as you explore that those differences, whether it's the chin, the nose, or the forehead towards the knee, you can perhaps feel each variation causes the neck to be used slightly differently. So when I think of the chin going to the knee, I can feel more a shortening in the back of the neck than if I were to think of the forehead or the back of the head coming to the knee. Now, Paul, once you've had a brief rest, bring the hands back to standing. And this time, keep the legs long, but see if you can just bring the head underneath the gap of the right arm, and then away. So it's just the head coming underneath the gap. You're keeping the legs fairly chilled and relaxed, and away. Maybe try a few movements thinking it's the chin that's leading. I don't, I don't really like the chin one because I can feel, oh, it's shortening in the back of the neck. But it's good to know that, to, to try it. Then I think of the tip of the nose and I can feel my neck already is keeping long. And when I think more of maybe the crown of the head or the, the forehead or even the back of the head coming through the gap, I feel a much more even curve in the spine. But just as you try a few more, you can feel, again, it has a lot to do with the movement of the spine. Good. And then pause, and then just try a few movements of bringing the, the leg up or the knee up again a few times. So you're rolling the pelvis to bring the knee up. And then try again bringing the head and the knee together and away. Head and the knee together and away. Once more, the head and the knee together and then away. Good. And then just leave that alone and take a rest again. Once you've explored the one side, and then come on to the, the back, just to see if there's any difference you can detect between the two sides. So for me, interestingly, I feel, quite unusually for me, I feel as though the right side of my pelvis is down a little bit more towards the floor. Usually it's the other way round, <laughs> other way round, being a little bit more settled into that side. So try just rolling the head to the right and to the left. I really do feel as though my head could just carry on rolling on the floor to the, to the right. Once you've explored that, please come on to your front again because we need to do the other side. So you have your hands or arms in a press-up type position. I personally like to turn my hands out a little bit more because it makes, for me, the shoulder blades more available. And then um, have your right cheek on the mat and begin to roll the pelvis and the chest to the right and then back, with the idea that you'll be able to slide your left knee up alongside you, and then away. So left knee up alongside you, and away. And then begin to add the movement of the head underneath the gap. So as if you're going to bring your head and your nose to make contact, but then try a few movements thinking it's the chin leading. 
and then the tip of the nose leading, just so that you can explore the difference between those points, what effect it has on the neck and the spine, just by thinking of the head as being the chin, the nose, or the crown of the head. And then pause, keep the legs fairly quiet and long, and then just see, can you bring the head underneath the gap of the left arm? And then back. So just the head underneath the gap, and then back whether it be the chin, the tip of the nose, or the forehead, the back of the head that you're thinking of sliding up. And if I just pause here for a moment, you have a look, you'll notice how my right arm has completely lengthened, that shoulder has come down, and my left shoulder is really up and away from the floor and then come back there just once more and then keep the head fairly quiet and just try and bring the leg up a few times on its own so again you're rolling the pelvis and the chest to bring the leg up see if that's a bit easier and then see once more if you can just try a few movements with the head and the knee coming close together and away. And although there's not a big difference, I, still, I can feel it's a little bit easier. I get a little bit closer maybe, the head and the knee, or certainly more comfortably than how it was before. Again, just pause for a moment and take a take a rest on the back. So I'm kind of cantering through these variations quite quickly and that's really, I have to be mindful not to keep the video um, too long. Someone left a comment actually on one of my videos saying it was um, effectively it was too long so I'll try and keep it as short as possible which means I'm not sh doing the variations as many times as I might do on my own or that you may wish to. So if you feel you need to spend more time exploring the movements, please do and just pause the video. And if you need more of a rest, always, of course, feel free to take that by again pausing the recording. So come on to the back just to check that contact. Wow, my pelvis really feels as though it's much more resting towards the the back, the upper part of the sacrum, which is nice. Nice. Feels nice and heavy into the into the floor. Once you feel as though you've had a sufficient rest, please once more come on to the front. And you've probably guessed what's coming. We've explored bringing the right knee up and, the, and then we went to the other side to bring the left one up. So now we're going to explore alternating from one side to the, to the other. So position your hands again in that press-up type position. And see if you can begin to roll the pelvis to the right so as to slide the right knee up and at the same time move the head to the knee. Lengthen the right leg and then see can you switch so it's your left knee that's coming up and you're moving the head towards the knee. However you define the head, whether you're thinking of the chin, the nose or the forehead. And then away. So we're just going from side to side. So really noticing how it's because of how you're rolling through your middle to do this, or rolling the weight to one side of the spine and the pubic bone and then the other. And then keep your head fairly quiet, so it could be the forehead down or just resting somehow comfortably, as you just explore bringing one leg up 
and then the other. One leg up, and then the other. And then um, keep the legs fairly quiet, and see if you can just focus on the movement of the head. Going under one bridge, and then the other bridge. The one bridge, and then the other bridge. And then return to that head meeting the knee either side. Head meeting the knee either side. And then leave that alone once you've explored. Again, come to rest on the back. Those who, who did watch the amphibian lesson, you'll know I'm I'm sort of just post-Covid, but pleased to say, and thank you for those who left a message um, wishing me well, I really appreciate that. I am feeling a lot better today, thank you. Probably for the first time, feeling much more like my normal self um, since I caught the, the virus. So just uh, rest into the floor, roll the head again a little bit left and right, And then once you've had sufficient rest, please roll to the side and come up again. So we can just come back to that all, all fours movement we were looking at at the beginning of the, of the class. So have your, come onto your hands and knees if that's comfortable for you. And then um, just see what's it like now to bring your, cross your right knee in front of the left or over the left and then come back. So you're just trying to cross your right knee in front of the left. Maybe you're feeling much more the softness in the back facilitating this ability. You can see I'm not trying to keep my back still or in space or anything. I'm allowing the back to move in space, my weight to shift, to shift, to facilitate the crossing of the knee. And then just see, can you try and cross the left knee, the left leg in front of the right? and then back. So actually a big movement of the spine and the pelvis in space to facilitate that. I'll just do one more and then um, pause and take a rest on the back. So hopefully, certainly by this stage of the class for my students, things are beginning to change. Um, but. Um, uh, again, uh, many people don't find that uh, hand position comfortable, so only do what you you can. Please come to rest on the on the back. And then once you've had that rest on the back, return to the front. So come to lie on your front and this time, this time, could you have your arms stretched out to the side at shoulder height? So if you can see me on the screen, arms are out at shoulder height, palms are down towards the floor. And I have my left cheek on the mat at the moment. Could you begin to roll your pelvis to the left so as to slide your right knee up alongside you and then away and then could you roll the pelvis to the right to slide the left knee up alongside you. 
So it, it, I'm, I'm turning my head each time that I do this. It's so just slide the right knee up alongside. And then the left. So just rolling the pelvis from side to side to slide one leg up and then the other. Now the arm position is kind of um, taking away a little bit of freedom of the movement in the kind of shoulder area and the chest. Um, so again it requires you to go slowly to soften to soften the spine. And then can you, in this funny position, even think of sliding your head a little bit to look towards the knee that's coming up. So just sliding the head a little bit towards the knee that's coming up. And just notice, is this easier or is it harder than the variation with the arm standing? And then pause, pause for a moment. Bring the hands back into that press up type position. And then just see, is it easier to do this movement with the arm standing? standing, so you're sliding the head towards the knee that's coming up. And then pause, this is where things get a little bit trickier. Instead of sliding the head towards the knee that's coming up, could you slide it to the opposite direction? So as my right knee is coming up, I'm turning my head as if I wanted to look underneath the left arm. I slide that away, and as my left knee comes up, I'm sliding the head as if I'm moving the head as if I wanted to bring it underneath the right arm. So it's a very, very different thing for the back to be able to do. Take it easy. So you're sliding the head underneath the opposite frame, or towards the opposite frame, than what it may be used to. Much more complicated movement in the back. And then pause, and then see if you can once more take the arms out at shoulder height palms towards the floor and again slide the right knee up and see can you move the head as if it's going to disappear underneath the frame of the left arm, the opposite arm and then vice versa. So as I bring the left knee up I'm looking underneath the frame of the right arm and from side to side, good, side, to side, feels very weird, feels <laughs> very weird indeed, so don't do too many, just test that, and then please come to rest on the back again, so a more complex variation, and um, these variations of course means that your brain, your nervous system is having to work out a new way of doing something and in that process of working out that new thing it means it's having to let go maybe of some existing habits of holding shock tactics <laughs> for the brain, for the nervous system. So just see how that all feels. Maybe point and flex both feet a few times. Feel that movement travelling through the spine. And then just roll the head again a little bit. Left and right. Wow. So nice. To feel. Good. Once you've had sufficient rest for yourself, 
please bend the knees, roll to the side and come up. We're going to add another variation now. Um, this time, instead of being on all fours, could you come onto your elbows, elbows and your knees, the elbows and knees, and maybe it's possible for you to cross your right knee over the in front of the left again and then come back. So right knee in front of the left and then come back. If you find this is almost impossible, you need to lift maybe the right elbow to do it a few times, that's absolutely fine. If you need to lift any the other elbow, it's absolutely fine. As you sort of explore the movement, but then after a while, see if you can do it without lifting the elbow. So if you, if you just spend a moment looking at my movement, um, it's a lot of movement in the pelvis and the spine. Once you've explored it with the right knee in front of the left, see if you can do the other cross. Left knee in front of the right. You can see why I'm so keen to have my sliding mat <laughs> today. Makes life a lot easier takes any friction out of the equation across the left knee in front of the right. Good. And then see, maybe you could alternate once the right over the left coming back and then the left over the right and back. Please leave that alone. And then have a have a rest. Rest on the back. Whew, that variation's much, much, much more aware of the, the movement in my hip joints. A lot of uh, much more, yeah, much. It's almost as though they've lit up in my awareness, that possibility of moving. For those of you who practice disciplines such as yoga, great lesson, great lesson for the hip, hip joints as well. Uh, once you've rested, again, coming back to the breath, roll the head again a little bit from one side and then the other. And then please come on to your front again. So hoping by this time, this stage of the lesson, back's feeling a lot freer, a lot more available for movement. Um, please come on to your. Uh, uh, but if it isn't, that's fine too. That's fine. If it, um, please come on to your front, and once more, have your hands in a press up type position. And see, can you bring your right knee up alongside you and keep it there? So you keep it, you brought it up alongside you. And just see, can you lift your pelvis onto the knee? So if you look at me on this on the screen. I, I do, I'm pressing into my left arm to help me and the pelvis, it's as though if I've got a piece of string on it, to lift it, it's being pulled up and on a diagonal backwards so that the knee can begin to support my weight. And then I, it, I come back again. So I'm shifting, transferring the weight into the knee. And see, can you, can you come back again a few times? So just lifting and then back. Lifting and then back. 
good. And then see, can you stay? So earlier, just to show you, I was lifting the head to do that, and that's absolutely fine. But this time, I'm going to try and keep the head fairly quiet. So as the pelvis lifts and comes over the knee, my left side of my face is still in contact with the floor. Can you stay there and then slide your left knee up and then let it go long again? Left knee up and then let it go away the knee. Left knee up and then let it go away again. Up. And you'll see the pelvis is shifting in space to bring the weight onto the knee to facilitate the leg coming up. And then as the knee goes long, pelvis moves back towards the floor. So I'm shifting, bringing the knee up, and then letting it go away again. Pause. Just rest for a moment. And then let's see if we can do that to the other side. So you slide, the, you roll the pelvis to bring the left knee up alongside you. Think of bringing the pelvis up and back towards the kind of left heel. So the weight is in that leg, uh, that knee, leg. Can you then slide, slide your right knee up? And then let it go long, up alongside you, and let it go long, up alongside you, and let it go long. Just one more time, up alongside you, and then let it go long, and then take a rest. So one of the skills we're practicing, it's not just these are peculiar movements, is the ability to transfer weight through the pelvis to come up to an all fours position and then to go back, back to the floor. You see it's that rolling, Transference of, transference of weight to come up to an all fours position as smoothly as possible. Just rest for a moment on your on your front to your back, and then the next time, see if you can maybe bring both knees up at the same time and then away sliding both knees up and away trying to keep the head down so if you can slide both knees up and away both knees up and as the knees come up, I sort of lift the pelvis and move it back to sit back on my heels. And then slide them away. And then, once you've explored that, come and lie on the back again. Maybe, just as you're resting on the back, I'm sure you've seen infants. <laughs> Infants, they have this, they can sleep anywhere with their head down, their knees tucked underneath them, and they can just fall asleep here in this kind of position. Position with their head down, so it requires a lot of flexibility in the back and the spine to be able to, to do that com comfortably. Once you've had a, a sufficient rest, please just come once more onto all fours again. And just see what's it like now to cross one knee in front of the other. 
and then alternate. Are you finding you're moving your pelvis in space a little bit more freely to accommodate the crossings of the knee one in front of the other? Uh, once you've tested that, okay, just come to rest on the back. And notice how that all how that all feels. How the back is making contact now, whether you're feeling maybe a little bit flatter. And then please just roll the head again one more time, a little bit left and right, see how that is. And then pause, bend the knees, please roll to the side and come up. So I'll end the lesson there, but I do invite you when you come to standing just to take a moment to notice how that all feels in standing. Um, it, it, um, I hope you enjoyed the lesson. It certainly has some more challenging positions. and uh, But as I said, a great one for bringing um, flexibility uh, into the hips uh, in particular um, and uh, more flexibility into the spine. Uh, if you have any comments about the lesson or any questions please don't hesitate to leave them in the comments section below. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already please hit the subscribe button and um, see you for the next lesson fairly soon.